Hi everyone, I'd like to discuss the mechanics of Chaturanga. So Chaturanga Dandasana is staff pose and it is a tricep push-up where we try and have the hands right underneath the shoulders and we'll draw the shoulders back. Often this is referred to in a lot of yoga circles as the push-up or uh, as part of the vinyasa. But vinyasa is a Sanskrit word that means to place in a special way or appropriate placement. So it doesn't necessarily always have to mean Chaturanga Dandasana, but it is part of the Ashtanga Vinyasa sequence that was developed by Guruji Patabi Joyce. And the Ashtanga Vinyasa sequence is one of the strategies of the physical aspect of the eight-limbed practice, the Ashtanga, which we as yoga students, eternal students, try to practice. And that includes everything from our ethical observances, externally and internally, the yamas and the niyamas. Then we get into asana, the postures, the seat upon which the yogi meditates. Pranayama, which is the breath work or the harnessing the power of life force energy. Then pratyahara, which is sense withdrawal. So that's where we use the breath as an awareness of our physical body and that's the bridge between our physical body and our mind versus our intellect or intuition. So then we start to practice single pointed focus or dharana and then dhyana or meditation is the state that we receive from concentration. Then maybe we visit samadhi. I think we get little glimpses of samadhi which is bliss or just transcendent peace uh, in our lives. You know those moments where you just sort of snap back to reality and you really remember where you are and you feel connected to everyone and everything. I, I think that's samadhi. Okay. They say that our great masters achieve samadhi and then that's just a state that they can enter. And then when we leave our bodies, that's maha samadhi, so the great uh, liberation. So Chaturanga is probably one of the most commonly uh, misaligned postures in the practice of yoga. And we do so many Chaturangas in power yoga and in vinyasa yoga and in all of like the favorite Western styles of yoga where we work out really hard um, that we can get torn rotator cuff tendons. So I'll show you a few things that will help you to stay safe in your Chaturanga Dhanasana. First of all, the hands are aligned directly under the shoulders. So the first option is to have the knees down and instead of having the hips lower or the hips higher, we scoop the tail under and we press the floor away. Notice that the space between my shoulder blades is broad rather than allowing the shoulder blades to draw together. So we broaden the scapula, the shoulder blades, so that we can turn on the serratus anterior, which will protect our entire shoulder girdle. We used to think that we melted the heart before we loaded up the arms, but this doesn't allow for core integration and for core engagement as best we could. So let's broaden the shoulder blades, let's draw the front ribs in, let's scoop the tail slightly. Then we draw forward and we lower. It's better if you're working with your strength to go down just a bit. One thing I see a lot in my yoga classes is kind of dipping down. Okay, but we want to keep the shoulders on the back and keep the whole spine in alignment. Okay, so going up and down like this is a nice way to build your strength. And I'm already getting warm. Uh, we have a couple of blocks and I'd like to show you a fun thing that you can try if you have blocks. And these are cork blocks. I have a link to a little bundle of two blocks and a strap in the video notes if you want to check it out, like I said before. And uh, when you put blocks down, it's a nice way to stop. So often we think that we have to go down lower than we need to, and that can put too much stress on our shoulders. Because a lot of our studios don't have mirrors, we can't see where we are in space. Um, another thing to do if you are building up your strength is that you can put your hands on the wall and you can just start to bend and straighten up on your tippy toes, kind of drawing the arms in toward the midline. And that's a nice way to get strong without any weight on your joints. Okay, 
Now, full chaturanga is to have the knees up. Now, chaturanga or knee down chaturanga is in neutral spine. There is another way that we can lower down through the push up, and that is called ashtanga pranam, which looks like this. So that is the one where we lower the knees, the chest, and the chin. Then you can draw the legs back, press into the feet, and then either move into Bhujangasana, which is primarily a core engagement posture, or you can draw the hands back slightly and lift to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, which is upward facing dog. I usually don't teach in a public yoga class to draw the body forward like the inchworm because it's very difficult to keep the elbows in and the core engaged to protect the shoulders. So again, Ashtanga Pranam or knees, chest, and chin would be to draw the heart forward right between the thumbs and then to send the legs back. And that's going to keep your shoulders safer than moving forward, okay? Now, Chaturanga Dandasana, I'm gonna put blocks to stop my shoulders because this will help me to prevent myself from lowering down too much, okay? Now I'm gonna walk my feet back I'm going to find full plank. I'm going to lift up through my knees. Okay, my core is engaged. My thighs are high. My tail is scooped. I'm leaning forward. The weight is in my fingers and thumbs. I'm going to move down. I'm just going to tap my shoulders boop, to the blocks. I'm going to press right back up. Okay, then you can see how much lower or less lower uh, to, to move down through the push-up than you think, because oftentimes we move down too far. If I was doing the chaturanga without the blocks, I might be doing something like this. How many times have you seen that in a class? I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I used to do that. We do that because we want to preserve our energy, and often we, we pull the elbows in and we try to balance on them, but ultimately we want to build the strength such that it just simply looks like this, okay? So it's just simply a 90 degree angle and the shoulders are drawn back and the core is engaged. Um, we can move into cobra or upward facing dog. So Bhujangasana or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, but we do the push up first. And then if it's hard for you, I invite you to lower all the way down to the ground first and then either move into cobra or up dog from there because a lot of times if we move down too far, we can put too much weight on our toes, which could hurt them, especially if your teacher is telling you to roll over your toes. Um, that can hurt if you have arthritis. Okay, now, and young people can get arthritis too. I have arthritis in both of my big toes from ballet. And I'm a young four-year-old, so on your inhale, move forward to plank and either with the knees down or in full chaturanga, we press forward and we lower and we stop. Then you either lower all the way down to the floor to then come into cobra. The neck is long, my feet are engaged, my legs are engaged, and I can lower down. For upward facing dog, you slide the hands back just an inch, and then you can lift up out of your thighs. Your neck is long. Try not to do this. Try not to, when you come up, just let the legs flop around and you're hanging out here, okay? You're really engaged, you're drawing the shoulders back, you're pulling the heart forward, and you put some drag on the hands to lower down as well. So that, my friends, is chaturanga um, as an aspect of a really important part of most vinyasa yoga classes that are based in the lineage of Ashtanga vinyasa. So if you have any questions, please contact me and check out the props that I have available for you. If you do need down chaturanga, you can have a blanket as well. So everything is there for you if you want to check it out. And if you would please subscribe to my channel, I can make more videos for you. And you can let me know what those might be. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Namaste.